So nice to see every face this morning. Amen. Y'all need worship? Yes! <laughs> we start off in prayer? Yes. The Lord. Father God, we love you this morning. Thank you for each and every soul that's here. We humbly come before you and worship now, Father. Our prayer is that you would be glorified. That you'd be magnified in each of us in our lives.
name is Shepherd. <laughs> so when Pastor Dan was here, in one of his sermons, he was uh, he was talking about what worship really is. And it's not what we're doing now, although that's part of it. The true worship is manifesting Christ in our lives Amen. and showing His love to everyone. Amen. And it reminded me of the song that I wrote many years ago. So I'd like to share that with you. Mm -hmm.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we come into your house today to give you praise. But we, what we really are asking is for you to share your love. And I mean your true love with us. That our spirits may receive it. That we stand with the Holy Spirit that will share with others. Father, come into the house and allow us to hear your knowledge, the true love that you share with each and every one of us. For we know, because we are children of God, and these things we pray in Jesus Christ, amen. 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 <clears throat> Jesus 
Okay, after he deals with the demons. And now, I want you to take note. Pay very careful attention to how Jesus dealt with the demons. It'll, it'll shock you. But they listen. Verse 15. And they came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down clothed. Watch this. In his right mind. Does your translation say that? Yep. Yes. So what he's saying is, he's in his right mind. So, me being the Greek geek that I am, I'm going to look for that word. <laughs> right? And I find the word, and it is the word sophrenio. Okay? And it means to literally have your mind in the right way. The right way of what, though? You have to go to the root of the word. The root of the word is sozo. Any of you Greek buffs know you what that word is. By grace you have been sozo. Salvation, same word. But what does that word sozo mean? Well, this is what it means. This is what we don't understand. Watch. It means to save, to deliver, to protect, to preserve, to heal, and to make whole. That's what that one word means. Now watch. All of those attributes have been done to this dude's head. Can you write that down on that phone? So, so. Sure. So, so. so, so. What was the first word before uh, so? Sophronio. Yeah, right there. Okay. <laughs> so Sophronio is 4993. Okay. All right. And that is what it says. He's in his right mind. So Fronio. Deal. Okay? But the root of this word is sozo, which is the word that we use for salvation. Okay? But look, here, but here's the thing. When I first got saved, everyone was like, oh, you're saved. And I'm like, okay. Well, what does that mean, though? Nobody's telling me what that means. You know what that means? That means I've been made whole. I don't feel whole. Shh. That's not what I said. That means I've been healed. I don't feel healed. Shh. Sound like I said. I've been preserved. I've been protected. I've been delivered. I've been saved. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Yeah. All of that happened where? In my spirit, right? Yes. Because we've got this thing, right? Here's the person. Oh, no jokes. Because I was a police officer and this is what I was used to seeing. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the soul, here's the body, right? Your spirit, now, once you've accepted Christ, your spirit's been totally made new by the Holy Spirit, right? That can never change. Amen. Now, and during the song, I got this. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. Yes. What's between the Lord and your heart? I'll say maybe it's right about here. Yeah. Remember, remember the, the horse? Your mind still thinks you're unsaved. Because the enemy keeps putting stuff in front of you saying, you are. You are. Right? And, 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 but, and we're walking. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, now look. This is a battle for your mind. Because this battle is done. The devil can't come in and say... Yeah, I'm going to take his spirit back. Yeah, right. So I, it can never happen, right? Amen. So if he knows that, the best thing that he can do is get you confused about yes. who you are. We've talked about this, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Because now we have to say, okay. Well, if we're talking about being in my right mind, my right mind has been renewed. Then what is the example? What is the description of my mind... That is now renewed because I've accepted Christ. By how she wants. By First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord? That he should instruct him. But we could have if we really, really no. want to. We have if we live the life of. No. Yeah. We have the mind of Christ. Amen. 
Wait, what? That's the shakeup that just happened. Somebody's getting deliverance today, I know. Yeah, the word of God does not come back void. And I'm telling you right now, somebody's getting a breakthrough. Yes. If you want to be on board, I want to be on board. But look, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, I have the mind of Christ. So now that tells me what? Any thought that comes into my mind that is not like Christ at all, it can't be from God. Think about it. Would God say, you're so ugly? No. no. <laughs> you loser. No. no. See, now we may attribute that to what people would say, but that's not God. No. Amen. So what does that tell you, though? You've got to know your father. Your yes. Father. You have to know your father. You have to know how much he loves you, and you have to know that doesn't change. Amen. Just because circumstances change and things change and you do and this and all that, that none of that ever changes. I put it on Facebook. When the devil says, God doesn't love you anymore, you just say, you don't love me no less, neither. Amen. Amen. And you just keep on Amen. walking. We have the mind of Christ. Yes. Go. What do you know? Five. Huh? Verse 5. Verse 5. First Corinthians 3? 2. 2? First Corinthians 2, verse 5. First Corinthians 2, 5. See, it's nice to have a pastor in the audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that your... <laughs> that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Okay, we're going to talk about this at the very end, right? <laughs> because all of this is linked in, okay? I am really struggling up here. No, you're not. Okay, you're just fine. Romans chapter 12. Yes. Man, would be wonderful if you guys yes. could. Yes. yes. Before when we studied this, I have thought, reason, act. So what we're saying is our thoughts, our reasons, our acts should everywhere. Should show God, manifest God. Yeah, so. And we learn it from the world, and that's why it's here, so we have to learn the, it from here. So, the mind of Christ that we have, the mind is not just the gray matter. In Greek, remember, because Greek is yeah. a picture language, the mind is the thought comes in, I reason on the thought, I have decided that thought is the right thought, and I act on the thought. That's what it means to be the mind. And you're absolutely right. So, the word of God comes to me. And it manifests in my life. Thank you, big brother. Sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> you know. You're welcome. Okay. All right. <laughs> Romans. She said, answer prayer. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. That's the left. Go left. Romans 12. Go left. I'm supposed to be writing these down. You guys want me to write these down? We have a lot. We have a lot. Oh, another thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I'm telling you, this, this passage means a whole lot more to me now. Amen. <laughs> it really does. Darlene and I were walking on the way over, and I said, I said, one of these days, baby, we are going to look up and we are going to see all those angels just surrounding this building, just looking down and going, I can't wait to see what God does today. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Not just on Sundays. Verse, every day. Verse 1. I urge you, therefore, brethren. All right, so he's in this with you. By the what of God? The mercies of God, right? How do you live your life? By how I do? No, nope. oh. only by the mercy of God. You woke up because God said, good morning. Amen. Okay? Oh, one eye. By the, the Lord gives and the Lord... Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. To present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. This is where our bodies are. This is where we start going. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Which is your spiritual service of worship. Okay, great. Spiritual service of worship. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the room of your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that you may prove what the will of God is. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Which is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Yeah. That's how I used to read this verse. Uh -huh. okay. Ready? Thank you. Okay. Do not be conformed to this world. Amen. But be transformed. Yes. By the renewing of your mind. Yes. yes. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to tell you, I'm, God's trying to get us to the place that we realize we are no longer lashed on to anything anymore. Amen. You really are free. Amen. And all of the things in your life that try to it for you, God is going, I'm with you. So, 
If it's about this here, because it's not about our spirit, okay? Love that question that Darlene had. When we first got met, one of the very first things she said in our, in our relationship was, if I'm saved, why is the devil wasting his time with me? Wow. He can't take my salvation, right? Then what is he bothered? Because he can take your reward. He can take your inheritance. He literally can take your eternal life. Huh? When does eternal life start? Eternal life start? When you believe. When you believe. At that moment, eternal life starts, right? In that moment, you're literally supposed to be manifesting Christ. Yeah. And you have, you have, you may think you have it, but you have, right? Yeah. And in that, you're already in. You're already walking. That's why we're here. You're, you're already one. Guys, you're already one. We're already victorious. We don't walk in a manner to try to overcome the enemy. Right. We have overcome the enemy when we do good. Yeah. Meaning we yeah. have Christ manifest through us. Yes. yes. So what do we do with this money? Loser. He's a loser. Forever loser. Amen. All right, now look. He wants to make this connection. This is important. Go to verse 4 of Romans chapter 1. For just as we have many members in one body. We're all many members. I have rules. Well, uh, Lighthouse rules are in effect. You said go to what? Romans. You're in Romans 12. Jump down to verse 4. Well, yeah. You said a whole lot more, but that's what okay. we're going to do. Romans 1 is great, too. I'll go back and read that later. <laughs> 12, <laughs> Romans 12, verse 1. What? Verse 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to say bingo. Jen's <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> for just as we have many members in one body, and all members do not have the same function. Don't get focused on the function. So we who are many are one body in Christ. Yes. And individual members one of another. Now here's the thing. This battle of the mind, you can't get through on your own. God wired it that way. Amen. I have to come to my brother and say, look man, when this happened, this just really took me out. Hey, this is the truth of who you are. This is the truth of that situation. Yes. Oh. See, that's why the Bible says share, bear one another's burdens. Yes. It's not, he did what? Mm, I went to your friend, I woke up and said, what's wrong with No, he didn't. Would Jesus do that? <laughs> no. No, he would not. That's how you know. <laughs> so now look, this change of the mind thing, you can't do on your own. And what is the enemy going to tell you to do? You have to do. Figure it out for yourself. You're old enough to figure it out for yourself. You try that, you will be on an island all by yourself. All by yourself. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. We're, we, we want freedom from what God says is in our minds. This, this attack. Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Who? Folks, it really is all about me. Because you want to know how I know? Because I lived it all week long. I know exactly what it, what the sense is when Holy Spirit is moving in my life. I'm literally getting to that point. It's like being in a river. And you're kind of just, you know, whatever. And sometimes you do the bank, but that's okay. And you just keep going down the river. But there are many times when I want to take my foot out and then I cause a ruckus and all of those things. And then I find myself sitting on the bank going, how do I get back into the river? My problem isn't the river has stopped moving. My problem is I got out and waited. If I would get back in, will the river take me where I need to go? But what if I'm ashamed to get back into the river? You're delaying, and you're literally telling the river, you're less than. I don't need you. I'm, I'm good on my own. And you know what the river's telling you? We need you. Get back in. There's water. Yeah. Yes. Stop. Oh, wait. <laughs> Thank you. It's a dangerous job, Miss Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
All right, verse 1. Now watch. If there is any encouragement, hallelujah, in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, which you can read in 1 John 2, if any affection and compassion make my joy complete by being of the same like mine. Ah. So when I see my brother struggling, it's not me to say, my brother's struggling. It's me to say, this is really the truth of who you are, remember? Yes. Amen. Now that's a whole lot different than I can't believe that you did this thing wrong and you better yes. go yeah. But you need to go to him. How do I want to be treated when I have made a mistake? Love. I want listen, I want Jesus to come up to me and put his arms around me and put his head here, put my head here and say, it's all right, buddy. It's not who you are. It's not who you are. Amen. Yeah, it's not who you are. That's even it's gone now. Amen. So it wasn't even the thing, so let's keep going. Yes. See, that's the life of a Christian. <laughs> It's, it's not about doing stuff, folks. It's literally about knowing who you are. What is Paul saying? What is the one thing that Paul wanted to do? He wants to know him more. I want to know him more. How do I do that? Verse number three. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with, here it is again, humility of mind, let each of you regard to one another more important than himself. How do I do that? Stop. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Here's the linchpin, verse 5. Have this attitude. Your mind and your actions have this attitude in you. Yeah, that's of course what I want to do. Which are also in Christ Jesus. Yes. You don't have to try to manifest it, folks. It just happens. You want to know how I know? Because I know. Because it's happened to me. And I'm walking through this door going, there's no way the Holy Spirit can use me right now. There's no way the Holy Spirit can use me right now. And I get to the checkout and I'm going, man. And all of a sudden, I hear Holy Spirit say, tell that woman in front of you that she needs to sing. And not stop. I have just gone through Walmart thinking about all of the things that have been such an issue. You're telling me to speak to this, this beautiful woman standing there. There's the lady with, who's checking her out, and I'm going, I'm not going to do it. Sing. It's the only word I would hear in my brain. Sing. Sing. And I'm like, now look. There comes a time when you know you're either going to do this or it's going to be. Okay? So you're like, ma'am, do you sing? Well, yes, I do. Okay, this may sound weird, but Holy Spirit is really impressed by me to tell you that he loves the way that you sing, and he just wants you to keep singing. Don't stop. Yes. Wow. Yes. I was just going to go home and call the praise team and tell them, I can't sing anymore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I could have been disobedient and said, hmm, but guess what? God's going to get her attention out in that yes. parking lot. Yep. Yeah. Right. And I don't want to miss those moments. Why? Not because God used me, <laughs> but God, God used me to touch his child. Yes. I was able to be a funnel of love for God and his child. See, that's what this is all about. It's not about me doing stuff. It's about me understanding how free I am to walk in Christ. This attitude, Jesus walking on the earth, is not some standard you can't reach. God literally has put you in him to walk that way. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't want to see that in Scripture because now we say, everything I do wrong is going to be saved. No, 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 it's going to be wiped away. Yes. How does dirt stay on that stainless? Only if you hold it. Remember, come on, you have to. That's why we have to have our mind renewed. That's why you have to wake up and say, I am not tethered to the enemy anymore. Amen. I'm not tethered to the enemy anymore. We're a bunch of fools walking out like this all day long. <laughs> now go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Now look at the buildup that that Lord is trying to show us here. Okay, 
Because when he gave me these verses, he's like, write them down this way. Chapter no, he didn't say it like that. Chapter three, he says, write them down this way. Yes. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, oh. is where we're going to start. Three, one, four. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Since you have been raised up with Christ. That great word means since. Not if, since. Since you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. Yes. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That's yes. awesome. Verse 2. Set your what? Mind. On things on the earth. No. no. Above. Are you sure? Yes. yes. Above. Above. Says not set not your minds. Wait a minute. Set your minds. Not. On your bank account. No. Set your mind on your family. No. no. So, you get in the picture? Yeah. Amen. But what are the things above? Verse 3. You have God. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now look, if there's ever a time that you would say that the scripture is wrong, try to, try to do something with that. <laughs> there is no way, no how, and no fashion, as my mother used to say, that you can tell me that doesn't mean that I'm dead in sin and alive to Christ. Can't be. There's no way that you can spin it. I don't care what you say. But if it's true for me... And it must be true for you too. Amen. And if it's true for you, it's true of all of them as well. Amen. Oh, even those unbelievers, especially yes. the unbelievers, yes. because they're deceived. Yes. They don't know that they've been created in the image of God to be God's hands and feet on this earth. Yes. They've just been told, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. What do Christians do? You're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. Jesus comes along and says, God loves you. Amen. It doesn't matter. Circumstances. It's about your relationship with Him. Amen. Look, all of the things that are chaotic in your life, look, He's going to take care of all of it. How do I know? Because He did it to me. Yes. yes. No, use them for good. That's the gospel. Yes. Not, hey, prayer, prayer. You can go to heaven one day. If you get a chance, come back at the end of the year so we can baptize you. <laughs> <laughs> baptize? Find me a tub. Listen, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again because the Spirit has really encouraged me to do it. If you yes. get somebody to Christ and you're going to baptize them, you baptize them on the spot. Don't you wait and say, Pastor, we need to do it. Uh -uh. On the spot. I haven't been to school. Ready? Boom. You win. That's all you got to do. Down okay. up. If they don't come up, what it meant to be, I guess. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hold on. That's Pastor Dan. That's not me. Man arrested for dipping weight. Hey, she, you see what this is about? Yes. This is about you getting released from the fact that you think you're really a problem. You think you're really an issue. You think your life is not. Because your life really is. I think if God would give us a second just to peel back the veil and really see what our lives are like, we would be like, oh. <sighs> <sighs> Let's do this thing. <laughs> so the enemy's crafty. Okay? Very crafty. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Because gonna, you're going to hear something here, and it's going to resonate. It's going to resonate with your heart in a special way. In a beautiful way just between you and the Lord. Okay? I remember the first time I read it, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse number three. I think I should just have her come up here and just write them on the board. She's like, oh. she is on. Oh. She can be. She can so be your the way he does things is just so amazing yeah, because this week that's all that's been, this is all that's been on my mind and it's been speaking to me. Yesterday I sat at lunch with a friend of mine that's really been on our heart with this people and we had this talk and at the end of the at the end of the lunch she says. What are you and John going to come to dinner? You know, and that has not been that way for like a year. Either. It's been a year. It's been a lot of years. Now, watch what all of this mind stuff is about. Why does the enemy want to keep you so deceived and so off track that you can't truly live the life you were called to live? What is the whole deal? Because as long as you don't know who you 
Verse 3. But I am afraid. Lest as the serpent deceived Eve. And what did he do? He twisted God's word. Yeah, That's right. all he did. Okay. He didn't make manifest anything. All he did was he, he twisted God. Did God really say? And then she added on to it. We can't eat or touch the tree. God never said that. So she's trying to add on so that her enemy can be defeated. She doesn't understand. Defeat the overcomes already happened. Right? Lest as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your what? Mind. Not your spirit. Why? Because it's already new. Look, the enemy knows he can't do anything about your spirit. But he knows he can toy with your mind. Why? Because the whole earth lies under his power. That's right. And he can put those new women on that TV and those half-naked men. And he can do that pop poker thing and that gambling thing and that lottery thing and all of these things. And just floods it through our eyes so much so that, man, we think maybe this is the way it's supposed to be. No, no, no it's not. If you pay attention to the outside world and what it says about you, This is what this is about today. Somebody is going to get revelation. I believe somebody already has. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. I'm afraid lest the serpent deceive you by his craftiness, your minds should be led astray, watch, from the simplicity. Now watch these words. They are so powerful and they're so yes, intimate. They yes. The simplicity and the purity of devotion to Christ. Yes. Amen. Now look, simplicity and devotion is not I'm going outside to knock down 16 things so Jesus is happy with me. <laughs> it's saying, hey, I woke up this morning and I know who I am. Amen. That's the first victory of the day. I know who I am. That's the very first thing. That's the whole, that's the change right there. I know who I am. Then what happens during the day? God, thank you that you love me. Yes. Because that never changes, right? No. Nope. Are you sure? Yes. Even if you make a mistake. Yeah. No matter what. Surely God would look at me and say, I can't today, not today. Oh my goodness. Not, look, I've had enough of you today. <laughs> Whew. You have more of me than yesterday. Nope. God would never say that to me. Nope. Nope. He would never say that to you. No. Ever. Ever. So why wouldn't we say it to ourselves? Listen to the enemy. God wants you to have a devotion to Christ. But it's not a devotion to Christ. A devotion to Christ. It's a simple. God, I love you. Yes. That's devotion. Folks, please. I know the world has told you that you're supposed to act a certain way and do a certain thing and save a certain amount of people. Listen, you know how people come to Christ? By seeing your light. They see your light and they're like, oh yeah, that's I have to have that. It's why people keep coming back. <laughs> Go to 1 John 4. 1 John chapter 4. Come on. Here goes. Here comes the flood. 1 John chapter 4. Now look. There are things that the Bible says that we'll say, okay, that's cool. But there are things that the Bible says that are, they truly are meat. Okay? And what the Bible says when we read them, we'll look over it again and we'll be like, did I really just read what I read? Go to verse 9. By this... The love of God was manifested in us. But th by this, the love of God. Last was in verse 9. First John 4. First John 4. First John chapter 4. Yes. John chapter 4. Verse 9. We can read it again, how we do it. Amen. Verse 
All right, what is it? The sermon. The love of God. Was it manifested in us? Where? In us. Okay. Anybody have a different translation for manifested? Sure. If you've got it, sure. You got the same? What you got, Pastor? But I got it. I got it. Verse 9. It's going to give us a different. In this love of God was manifested towards us. Okay. Pastor, what do you got? You got manifested too? I've okay. got manifested toward us. Toward us? Okay, now look. What do you got? Okay, now watch. This is what they'll tell you. God manifested life toward you. Yeah. You got to catch it in order so that you can live it. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was taught. But now, this is what the Bible says. By this, the love of God. Okay, now stop. What is the love of God? Ho oh, ho. Okay. But did the love of God come in a in a male form? Yes. Yeah. So the love of God, Jesus, was manifested. So God said, everything that I am, here he is in Christ. Right. Okay? Yeah. Now, don't miss this. You're now connected to him. That's right. Okay? So now this love manifested on the earth is like you being manifested on the earth in God's love. Bible saying it. I'm not saying it. Uh-uh, can't be. I've got too many things going on. You have to change your mind. Yes. He sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. Through him. With him. So it's a relationship. That's what 1 John is all about. Fellowship. He's not talking about whether or not you sin or not. He's talking about fellowship with the Father. If you go back to the very beginning of 1 John chapter 1, it shows it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So if God's love has been manifested in me, now my mind has been made right. God should manifest in me. How does this happen? 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. <laughs> Pastor already alluded to it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Do you see what God has done for you? Yes. He has literally freed you from all of the of your mind. Yes. Okay? That person who says, you can't, you can't, not that. Stay in your own lane. There's a word for somebody today. Stay in your own lane. Stop crossing over and be in somebody else's lane. You stay in your own. Yes. Who? Okay? First John chapter 5, verse 4. 4. Whatever is born of God, stop. Learn to break these passages down. Whatever is born of God, would that be you? Yes. yes. How? Because of what I did? No, because yes. of who I believe. Amen. Yes. Right? <laughs> now I'm born of God. Nobody or nothing, no how can take that away from me. Amen. No person in no church can say, you better do these 16 things and I know that you're saved. I already know that you're saved. Yes. I already know that your heart is right with God. Why? Because I can sense the spirit in you. Yes. Oh, there's no spirit in me. Oh, he is. <laughs> Trust me. He is. But he ain't going to put up with it for long. Come on now. He wants you free. Yes. Now, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has been, that has overcome the world. Our what? Faith. Faith. Where does faith manifest? In the mind. Look, I don't walk outside, go into Walmart and say, Father, faith wins. And some thing shows up in my hand. Faith is, this is who you say I am. And I choose to believe that. Yes. Now here's the thing. A lot of people are like, oh, that's so hard to live that life like that. What's going to happen when you die? I'm going to heaven. How do you know that? I believe that. <laughs> How is it so hard to believe that you are God's child on this earth? Because of what the world wants to tell you. But listen, you're not supposed to listen to the world. Amen. And what they say. Amen. You listen to 
in the heart of God. We're getting the Listen, world out of it. Amen. One of the one of the greatest impacts on my life of a testimony was when this woman said, I had I felt like I had to get my life right before I could come to him. Because I saw how lofty and how great and how wonderful he was. I wanted to give him something. So when I came to him, I wanted to be something. But what I didn't understand was he loved me when I was at my lowest. Yes! Got yes. better. See, that never changes. Just because man wants to put an indication on somebody doesn't mean that you have to. I wonder what happened to make them get into the way that they're, well, get, it's none of your business. <laughs> Stay in your own lane. Pray for the person. Don't analyze what's going on in their life. Amen. Oh, that's going to help. <laughs> right? It never does. All it does is causes more problems. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of those days. He even took the other ones away. Now, I wrote a description of faith that God gave me this morning. Ready? Faith. Having the audacity to believe that what God said about you is true. Faith. Having the audacity to believe that what God says about you is Amen. true. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it, Mr. Devil. Amen. This is who God says that I am. Yes. When I wake up in the morning, listen, all week long, I woke up this morning and I did this. came over me and he says, he said, well, are you done now? <laughs> I'm sitting, he's like, are you done now? And then I just had a beautiful time of, of worship with him. It wasn't this hoorah, it was just, I had an intimate conversation with my best friend. Yeah. My God, my lover, the one who loves me more than anything. That's, that's more than anything else. Yeah. And then when the world says, well, you know, you're never going to be. And you, we, I find, I'm beginning to find that what they say really doesn't matter. Because what they say doesn't matter to me because that's not who I am. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and if you had any questions, <laughs> let's finish with one more passage. 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. 21. All right. 20 and Sisters being very forceful. First John what? First John chapter five verse twenty. Verse twenty. And twenty one. And, and twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> now watch what he says in verse twenty. Everybody ready? Yep. And we what? No. Stop. I know who I am in him. That's the words that need to come out of your mouth. I know who I am in you. Thank you that you love me. Amen. Amen. Great. Surely, he doesn't have his life in order. I've seen him make mistakes. I've seen him. What are the choices he keeps making? You know who's saying those words? The enemy. Yeah. You want to know why? Because they're scared poopless. <laughs> <laughs> they know you're about to catch on fire. And they're like, okay, we've got to throw something in that brain. It's worked before, right? Yeah, let's do it again. What do you mean it's not working this time? What do we do? I don't know. Call the boss. I'm not calling the boss. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All because you got this. Yes. Today, this moment, you're free. You're free. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. The Word of God says you're free. Why? Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come. Has yes. He? Amen. Amen. And has given past tense us understanding. Yes. Understanding of what? That we are in Him. He's given me understanding who I am in Him. Yes. He's not giving me understanding that I'm all that in a bag of chips. He's telling me I'm in Him. And that I can walk in Him. Amen. That's awesome understanding right there, right? Now watch what he says next. In order that we might know Him who is true. How do you get to know somebody? 
time. You got to spend time. Would you like to watch a movie? Oh. <laughs> Damn, no. Look, you spend time with somebody. Amen. You spend time with somebody. Yes. This isn't a loner thing. No. And it can't be. We, we are only stronger when we're together. It's the power of magnification. You take lights and shift them all around, but when you bring all those lights together, what do you got? One big, powerful light. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 We know that the Son of God has come and that has given us understanding in order that we might know Him who is true. Watch this. And now read the words. We are in Him.
child of the Most High God. Yes. Amen. Who overcomes all things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Murder. A man passionate after God's own heart. Yes. Amen. Child molester. Amen. A man who understands that his identity is found in God and not in other things. Amen. Every single one of us have that story. My story, adulterer, pornography. That's who I was. That's not who I am. Amen. I don't walk around the house going, man, I'm an adulterer at no point. Why? Because of what I did. Because of what I believe about myself. See, it's not about us trying to make it. It's about us trying to be renewed in our mind. Amen. Go back to the beginning. What did he say? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to keep telling yourself who you are in Christ. I don't care if you have to say it 1,500 times a day. Keep telling yourself who you are in Christ. What's going to happen when you do that? Other things will come along. Other things will happen. Circumstances will take place. They'll all pump come in on you. But what you're going to find is, when you're in that moment, something's different. And when it's over, I think I've learned from that. Amen. You'll understand that the things that happen in your life are literally to help you to grow. So when I get into a situation and I do lose it, Holy Spirit says, hey, that's not who you are. That's mostly what he says to me. That's not who you are. You're right. But that part is now gone. See, that's the part that my is. Because I think that I know that I've done the thing wrong. And if I can remember that I've done the thing wrong, then surely God must remember. But that's not what the Bible says. No. The Bible says that as far as the east is, the far is west. from the west, so far as he has removed our transgressions from us, that means they'll never touch. Nope. But if you live in fear of sin, you're living in a wrong environment. Because you think your sin's going to come back around and bite you. Here says, I'm his. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us. That's in the perfect tense, which means it's done and it can't be removed, by the way. He has given us understanding about who we are now. That's what he did for you today. In order that we might know him who is true and we are in him. I want you to know that you are in him. Amen. You have to stay here all week. Don't leave until you know that you are in him. Amen. And if I am in him, then I am walking in him. Amen. And if I'm walking in him, even if I make a misstep, that misstep gets erased. Now look. It's not some form of cheap grace and you can go out and do whatever you want to. What happens in my life as I'm walking with Christ and I start seeing the things that are off, right? That conviction bumps me back to the Lord. It doesn't make me say, whoo, -hoo, I can keep doing that because that's a worldly mentality and you don't have that mentality anymore. Every time the Holy Spirit says, Psst, that's one step closer to the Father. Yeah. Don't ever hear the Holy Spirit's conviction is condemnation. I heard that before when Pastor Dan said it's so true. Don't hear conviction from Holy Spirit is condemnation because that would be like Holy Spirit saying, Jesus, you're not good enough. Mm. Wow. Yeah, right? Because that's it. If I'm in Christ, right? And if the Holy Spirit looks at me and says, You're just not right. You're literally telling Jesus Christ he's not right. Would God ever do that? <clears throat> See? And what does the world say? But how do you feel? <laughs> Look, that river is full of oil yeah. and gunk, and it goes places you don't want to go. Yeah. Stay in the cool river, mm -hmm. yes. even if you don't like it. Your brother's out here dying to raise him. I just want to share that I found that this renewing of the mind 
is such a pleasure because I get it from just reading his word, every word, and I just read it and allow my spirit to accept what it is that he is giving us. And this is what helps me keep these things from happening. And when they do, we know where it comes from. Yep. And the more I just seek him in this, it is so much better that I can stand strong and say, I know what it is he gives me, and I know what the adversary says to me, but this is what brings me joy. It is something I seek because it gives me such joy and I can just sit and read all day long because I get joy out of it. And when I'm not reading it, it is in my mind. So when these things happen, you go, this is from my father. This is not from my father. <laughs> this is from my father. This is not from my father. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you will find such joy. And to know that you could laugh and look at him and go, are you serious? <laughs> That's not in my father's word. Why are you even wasting his air? You know somebody else needs that air. <laughs> and this comes to where you can share it so willingly because it is in you everywhere you go. Yes. So it gives you joy. You know you want to share it with others. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. God. Amen. Here's Here's where. Let's, let's everybody pray. Let's let's pray. We need to pray. Holy Spirit, tell me we need to pray. Hey, listen. Just just you and the Father. Okay. He has a word for you. This is the moment of your departure. You have been on this runway waiting. And you have waited for your turn. And now in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you to fly. This is your departure. You fly. You take, take the sky. I have another word for somebody else. You have walked up the mountain. <clears throat> you have gone through its valleys. You've gone up. You've gone down. You've seen cliffs. You've seen rocks. You've seen, you've seen peril. But now you have gotten to the top of the mountain. And at the top of the mountain you say, now what do I do? And the Father has said, go forward. Whew. But now you are not worried about the descent, are you? You are now ready to jump off of the peak and to soar on wings like eagles. Accept that word if that's for you. That's yeah. for every single one of you. It doesn't matter how high your mountain is. The Lord your God is with you. Father, renew our minds. Yes. As we walk, let us see that illustration of that little girl putting that harness on that horse and leading it away when we are being led away. And Father, in that moment, help us to realize, yes, we are yours. We are not who the world says that we are. We are not who the world says that we should be. We are not the, the outcome of what their description is of us. Our description is in you, Lord God. Our identity is found in you and you alone. Every single person that hears the words from your mouth, Father, save them, restore them, heal them, yeah. renew them, yeah. give them new fire, Lord. Get them out of the comfort zone that they've put themselves in. Push them back into the into the into the, the river and flow the way that they're supposed to flow. In the name of God, we thank you so much, Father, for this truth that we don't have to work, that we are. 
by what you have done. 